Zao Medalsi, uh, co-founder and CEO of Quantum Elements. So we are out here and the Statue of Liberty is behind us and we are going to talk all about quantum elements and we we're having a conversation upstairs at lunch and you also gave a presentation which I found absolutely fascinating. So for our viewers, what is quantum elements and, and what is, uh, where are you located? What do you guys do? And, and let's just get into it. Sure. So first, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, we're an LA based company. The technology that I'm going to about to uh, share with you uh, came out of uh, the research work of my co-founder, Daniel Lidar, one of the world leading quantum uh, scientists. And uh, what quantum elements is all about is enabling the transition of quantum hardware and devices and computers from the lab to the real world. Think about where we are today. We're in this amazing pivotal moment where companies are able to start gaining confidence in their roadmap of realizing large scale quantum devices. Uh, we're hearing every day the improvement in performance and the focus is still how the hardware is behaving. Now is the time to attach the tools that will enable the acceleration of those uh, developments and those computers to make sure that they can address real world problems. And that's where we step in. Basically, there's a big amount of investment. We were talking about this in the hallway just before this. There's a, there's a huge amount of investment in the hardware and I'm building these quantum computers. And there's less investment in protecting against a quantum attack. And, and then it almost seems like the application layer right now is an afterthought. So how does quantum elements position itself in the space between the uh, post-quantum cybersecurity and the hardware and where do you see yourself on the, in the field of, of quantum? So let me give you an example that we are uh, most more familiar with. Let's talk about autonomous vehicles for a second. When we talk about autonomous vehicles, we take for granted the vehicle part of things. In order to have an autonomous vehicle, first you need to have a vehicle. And we're at a point where in quantum where we're starting to get the clear understanding of how this vehicle is going to work and look like. And now it's the time to add the autonomous. So how does autonomous work? You, uh, almost like an operating system, you feed a bunch of information about your vehicle, the speed it can run and the rate it can turn and the acceleration it has. You add to that a bunch of sensors, whether it's your camera or your LIDARs, etc. And then you can train large scale AI models to be able to take over and adapt, etc. That's exactly what we're doing with quantum elements for quantum. We're taking the quantum hardware, we're teaching our simulators everything that's need to be known about this hardware. And from that point on, we're allowing the users, the community, and the hardware companies to develop AI models that will accelerate hardware, dealing with noise and errors, and application. So we're covering the whole stack through this ability of virtualizing the machine, feeding in all the information that is possible, and then accelerating it through AI large-scale data. And you said you, your uh, software can work on any quantum machine. Which machines have you, have you been w working with? So currently we're mainly focusing on superconducting qubits. Okay. Uh, we already uh, started developing applications or capabilities for ion traps. So that's kind of the next modality that we're um, invest investing in. And the following modalities will probably be uh, neutral atoms and then gravitate to others. Um, and the reason is maturity. You, know, sure. you need to be where it's like I said, we're now moving out of the lab into the real world and our tools can really accelerate all the elements that are related to making those, those systems usable and address real world problems. So you had mentioned that like a quantum computer needs an operating system, right? Yeah. How does quantum elements like view themselves as a operating system or adjacent to an operating system uh, for quantum? 
we view ourselves as a development environment to allow every persona and every user in the stack to run much faster, adopting state-of-the-art tools, whether it's machine learning, AI, and large-scale simulations to do that. So one of the things that you're missing in, in quantum is large data sets. The reason is hardware is very scarce, it's very expensive, and it always evolves. So if you train today, will it be worth anything tomorrow? But if you have an adaptive platform that simulates hardware that is current and future hardware, and you can simulate at will every parameter and every component that changes, all of a sudden you're filling this gap that is currently missing in the market of hardware access and large-scale hardware uh, data generation. And that's exactly where we're coming. So where do you see quantum elements in three to five years? Three to five years, we see quantum elements as the leading platform to accelerate quantum applications and quantum utility. Every application that will uh, be uh, developed, whether it's in finance, in drug discovery, uh, in cryptography, will have underneath it the layer that is driven by the AI and simulation power of quantum elements, because that's the only way to accelerate and aggregate all this knowledge and feed it into optimizing and accelerating the discovery. It's the same trend that we're seeing today with drug discovery using machine learning and AI on the classical side. True. Companies like Google took decades of infrastructure and research, trained AI models to accelerate drug discovery. In the same sense, you can take information coming from simulation, feed it into large scale models to accelerate the development of applications. And obviously you need to start from the pain points. And that's exact, exactly what makes us unique as a company. We come from seeing all the pain of developing hardware all the way to developing applications. Sure. Now, our customers today use our software to make better qubits, to make better gates, to develop advanced error correction technologies using GPUs and AI, and then to accelerate the development of applications. You know, I, I uh, really appreciate the, the fact that, well, your presentation was so good and it seems like this space doesn't get thought about enough or discussed. Uh, and, and currently you said, you mentioned to me that you're uh, 20 uh, employees and based in California. Um, does, is, the, is this company, Quantum Elements, ever have any plans to go public? You know, as a CEO, we, I, I, my job is to uh, allow ourselves to benefit from all the optionalities. Uh, sure. Definitely taking the company public is one of the options, Sure, but it's not the only option. Uh, but I think we're in this unique situation where we've built the technology for almost three decades uh, based on research wow, and science. Wow, so that's a long time. Yeah, yeah, and now, you know, the company's been around for three years, kind of really solving hard problems first gaining customer confidence, getting contracts in place. And actually, it's, the timing is great because we're coming out of stealth tomorrow uh, and uh, announcing to the world you know, how our product performs and the benefits that it's uh, bringing. Um, so uh, we are definitely in a position to uh, start growing in a very uh, rapid uh, pace. Wow, amazing. So would it be, so since I'm brand new to the company, would it be safe to say that Quantum Elements is making quantum computers themselves more useful Absolutely. and easier to use. Absolutely. And, and quantum computers are very hard to use. Very hard. You need a PhD. You need to uh, currently use eclectic collection of different tools in order to make it work. Uh, effectively, you need to be a scientist. We sure. want to democratize it, open it to uh, more talent and to accelerate it using state-of-the-art capabilities, whether it's AI or uh, simulation, augmentation, and all of that. So we can really benefit from all the compute power that we have at yeah. our disposal today and make this industry a synergetic industry with a classical uh, world. Sounds, it sounds amazing. Sounds like this is just the beginning for you guys. Thank you. Um, so I really appreciate it. It's a beautiful day. We're, we're about to go in and, and listen to some panels, but 
Um, any final thoughts or final words uh, on Quantum Elements or? Um, like you said, you know, a beautiful venue, a great yeah. opportunity yeah. to discuss. I really appreciate the questions. I think we uh, we're in this very unique moment in time where all the pieces are in place and now we need to kind of put them together and, and accelerate and I uh, appreciate the opportunity. So I'm going to put your website on the screen and if anyone wanted to connect with you or had any questions, is there a good, good spot to do that? Yeah, go to our website, click join. You know, you can join our early adopter uh, okay. program. Uh, you can shoot me an email. Happy to discuss with everyone. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it.